Hey guys, this is Tyler with Diesel and today we're going to talk about the Insane Tech and the Jeep Grand Cherokee Quad Drive 2 system. Let's check it out. We talk a lot about the four-wheel drive system in the Wrangler because it's one of the best off-road vehicles that's ever made, right? It can go anywhere, it can do anything, we still get pretty good fuel economy, it's a good daily driver, things like that, right? Well, today what we're going to talk about is the Grand Cherokee because, to be honest with you, the four-wheel drive systems between the two vehicles are not that different. And even though this might look like an unassuming SUV that's really not made for off-road, rest assured that there's all kinds of tech and all kinds of capability packed in this vehicle that you might not even know about. Even though the Grand Cherokee has a much different look than the Wrangler, than pickup trucks, it has the four-wheel independent suspension, which, be more, which would be more characteristic to a car or a light SUV than it would be a Jeep with the, the solid front and rear axles. Much of the construction is still the same. The Jeep has a longitudinally mounted engine. It's got a transmission and a transfer case, just like the Wrangler will have, and that does a few specific things, a few key things for us. It's built more like a pickup truck or a rear-wheel drive vehicle where it can deliver a 50-50 torque split when it's in four-wheel drive. It's actually a little bit biased towards the rear, just like the Wrangler can do. And that's one key thing that separates the Grand Cherokee from a lot of other all-wheel drive SUVs, we'll say, right? The Grand Cherokee is designed so that it can deliver 100% of engine torque to any one of the four corners of the vehicle at one time, whereas some all-wheel drive vehicles might only be able to put 20% of the engine torque to the rear wheels, right? So why is that important? Why should you care about that? Well, if you're on an obstacle in a very trying off-road or sticky off-road situation, you might be in a situation where you have only one tire that has traction, right? But you still need to get up a hill, you still need to get over an obstacle, the Jeep Grand Cherokee is not going to leave you stranded because the the torque split, the way it's designed is exactly the same as the Wrangler, where in some Grand Cherokee models you can even lock in the rear differential and power yourself over those obstacles. The construction of the Grand Cherokee's drivetrain gives us some other key characteristics that you would see with any other typical four-wheel drive vehicle, right? So now that we have that transfer case, we actually have a true four low in the Grand Cherokee. So just like your Wrangler, when you lock it in four low and you can lock in the diffs, you know, for rock crawling for that extra control off-road, the Grand Cherokee is the same way. It has literally the same, you know, reduction method, same four low. We also get a neutral. So if you want to tow this behind a camper, an RV, um, situations like that, you can put your transfer case in neutral and it allows you to flat tow your Jeep really nice. On select models of the Grand Cherokees, you can also get a bunch of added off-road capability in your four-wheel drive system. The basic, you know, the limited things like that with the Quad or Track 2 system, they give you all the different modes for control. They give you the neutral, the true four low transfer case. But then on some models with the Quad or Drive 2 system, you can get a couple cool things. You get the Quad Lift, which gives you like up to 10, 12 inches of ground clearance, which is pretty awesome for a four wheel independent suspension vehicle. I don't think the Wrangler actually has that much more than that. And you also get one other key thing, you get a locking rear differential. They advertise it as like a limited slip, but it's a pretty solid rear locking differential. So again, they just pack these features in the Grand Cherokees that'll help power you over those obstacles. With all of this off-road capability, you might have a couple questions like, you know, I don't even know how to use this. What do I do with all this stuff? Is there any downside to it? The first thing I would say is there's absolutely no downside to it. Jeep did an awesome job with this. The fuel economy is solid on these. In the Wrangler, one thing that really annoys us or is maybe a little frustrating if you're in four high is you get a binding of the steering wheel when you're turning because we don't have that full-time four-wheel drive mode in this. In the transfer case in the Grand Cherokee, there's some clutch packs in there and things like that. So when you drive this around, even though it's a true four-wheel drive vehicle, there's no ill effects. You don't think you're driving a truck or a tank in four-wheel low or something like that. You really can't tell. But when you put it in, let's say, the mud mode or the rock mode and you go into four-wheel low and lock the rear differential, these things really are tough to turn. And that's just a good reminder that it's more along the lines of a capable off-road vehicle with actual four-wheel drive than it would be, you know, an Audi, BMW, or a Subaru with all-wheel drive. It sounds like the Jeep Grand Cherokee four-wheel drive system is pretty complex. It has a lot of different features and things like that, whereas a lot of people will be a little more comfortable with maybe the Wrangler system where you just have the four-wheel drive lever and you can rip it into four-wheel drive, four-load any time, right? So what do you need to know about this Grand Cherokee four-wheel drive system in order to use it properly? Honestly, you don't really need to know much because they make it pretty intuitive with the dial that they have to set four-wheel low, the different modes, things like that. General driving, you're going to be in the auto mode, which means it's always in four-wheel drive. It's going to use 
you know, the brake lock differentials to distribute torque to where wheels are needed. That's gonna be good for 99.9% .9 of the time you drive around. They do offer you a couple different modes for more fun. If you put it in the rock mode, for example, that's actually gonna shift you into four wheel low. And if equipped with the rear locking differential, it'll lock it up. Um, you've got the mud mode, that's actually going to leave you in four high, but it'll lock the front and rear uh, drive lines together. So you'll have more of a, you know, rugged binding off-road or binding four wheel drive feel when you turn just like the Wrangler has here. You've got sand and snow. Those are gonna be maybe a little lighter off-road modes. The one cool thing about snow is it actually sometimes will start you off in second gear on the transmission so that if you're really trying to get going, you don't have so much engine torque that you get wheel spin, right? But Jeep Grand Cherokee, you know, they really did a good job with this Jeep and, and giving you all this capability, but also making it extremely easy to use so that people you know, if you wanted to drive this 99% as your commuter, but when you get in situations like this and maybe you want to go to a hike somewhere that's a little more difficult or you need to get somewhere cool, you can feel confident that the Jeep Grand Cherokee is going to get you a lot of places that the Wrangler can get you to. So if you want to know how to use the four-wheel drive on your Grand Cherokee, everything that you need they put right on this terrain dial or part in your center console, right? So as you can see here, you have the different modes. You have auto, which is still a four-wheel drive, and you're going to use that, you know, basically when you're driving on the road, and really in anything, unless, you know, you're trying to do something else with the off-road. You have sand. Um, that is just going to be a little bit of a different off-road. They say sand or wet grass. I believe that will lock or give you a little more traction uh, locked between the front and the rear. You have snow mode. As I said, the one cool thing about snow mode is that it will start you off in a, a second gear, a higher gear sometimes just to minimize wheel slip. That's kind of interesting. You can see here on the right as well, as I change these different modes, it's going to go into different off-road modes. That's only if you have the quad lift suspension like we do. Mud is actually going to give you some more ground clearance, I believe, and mud will actually give you a pretty good lock between the front and the rear diff. I'll do some figure eights in the parking lot here in a moment. and you, It's hard to see on camera, but you can definitely feel the Jeep has a different feel when you're tight cornering on a hard substrate like this. And then if you want to look at rock, rock actually requires you to engage the Jeep to four low. It'll come up on the dashboard, put the transmission to neutral if you want to shift. So I'm gonna put my foot on the brake, put it in neutral. Now I'll push the four low button and it's gonna say four wheel drive shift in progress. And now I believe the Jeep is in four low. So if we put it in rock mode now, you can see it's gonna tell us rock on the dash and I'll put it in drive and instantly you can see we're in a four wheel drive low right now. So that's pretty much all you need to know how to use this. We're gonna go up and off road too. So as you can see in four wheel drive low in the rock mode, that's gonna give us a pretty stiff lock between the front and the rear transfer case. And that's gonna lock up that rear diff, right? So when I try and take a tight corner like this, it's gonna be a lot more well-mannered than the Wrangler will be because we still have a clutch between the front and the rear axles. We don't have a solid uh, lock. You can just kind of tell the Jeep is starting to push the front end. I can hear the rear tires chirp and things like that. Um, and that's, you know, again, it might be unpleasant, but you never would use this mode if you're on an asphalt parking lot like we are now. And it's just kind of cool because to me, it reminds me that this thing is pretty serious if you're willing to take it off road. So if you want to take the Jeep out of four wheel drive, in this case, I'm just going to switch it from rock to auto. It's still, you can go in four wheel low in any of these modes, right? So we'll go from rock to auto. It's going to bring my suspension back down. And then I'll say, I want to push it out of four wheel drive. Okay, we got to put the transmission back in neutral. Hit four wheel low again. And the computer's going to do the work. I could actually feel the Jeep relax a little bit because we got a four wheel low. And now we are back in four wheel Hi. So one last thing, if you ever wanted to tow it or for some reason you need to put your transfer case in neutral, you just push and hold that neutral button and it'll flash until it lights up solid. And then it's a neutral. You will get a message on the dash that says warning, vehicle may move even when it's in park. That's because you remove the transmission, uh, which normally parks. You remove that from the equation. So now 
if you want to take it out of neutral all you do is just push and hold again it might be easiest if you have a pen so you will see or you will hear some clunking like that because it's just like in the Jeep the JL you're basically just ramming that in and out of gear in that transfer case um, like I said I, I really probably would never use this function unless you're towing it behind an RV but that is how you use that function so that does it for today's video guys. I really just wanted to take some time and go over the Jeep Grand Cherokee four wheel drive system just like we did for this. If you're interested in learning about the Wrangler four wheel drive system, I'll put a link to the video up top here. I think that's pretty cool. But the more we drive our Grand Cherokee and the more we're around it, I start to realize that the Jeeps really aren't that different. One cool thing and I think one important differentiation to make between the Grand Cherokee and a lot of its competitors are, you're not gonna find this lock transfer case, rear differential lock, in too many like full-size SUVs that you could compete with out there. I do believe you know Chevy and, and General Motors is offing them in the Tahoe now. Uh, I don't think BMW or Audi have anything like that. Even though they do have the Quattro system and they can distribute power to all four corners, you're not gonna have any locking off-road assist. Um, and one stark difference is your all-wheel drive vehicles, so Subarus, you know, maybe Volkswagens and things like that. That would be more of an all-wheel drive system than it is a four-wheel drive system. So again, that's going to have more of a, a rear wheel assist than four corners of the vehicle that can take 100% of the torque. Um, and again, you get all that in the Grand Cherokee without really paying the price because the fuel economy is still good, the drivability is still amazing, the price is efficient, things like that. So. Great vehicles, I love them, um, and I love taking them you know, anywhere that people wouldn't think you could take a Grand Cherokee, right? So thanks for watching, guys. If you have any questions, make sure to leave them in the comments below. Um, subscribe if you like Jeeps, if you like learning about Jeeps and checking stuff out in beautiful settings like this. Other than that, we'll talk to you guys next time, and thanks for watching. I see that you can't see, like, yeah. it's not following you. It should follow you. What? The focus. No, you're not in focus.